So if you've been using a phone to control your Inspire or Phantom, you may want to switch to a tablet. This video will give you some tips. So one thing I should get out of the way first is there really is no best tablet to fly your Phantom or your Inspire. Uh, that's because tablets were never made for drones. They're made, they're all purpose, they do many things. And technology keeps changing. So if I tell you today what's the best tablet and you watch this video in a year, it's no longer the best tablet. There's gonna be a better one. But what I'm gonna do in this video is give you some tips on what you should look for when buying a tablet so you actually get a good tablet for your drone. I should point out quickly, uh, a lot of people buy tablets to do double duty. Uh, they use it at home or at work to surf the net, Facebook, Twitter, whatnot, and they also use it for flying a drone. I would recommend, if it's possible, if your budget can afford it, just buy a tablet to use with your drone. That way uh, you don't fill it full of apps that are going to mess up the software that DJI produces and puts on your tablet. No conflicts going on, everything works and it's always charged and ready to go, and you keep it in your case ready to fly. So when it comes to a choice of tablets, it all depends on what you want. If you use Apple products, then you have a choice of an Apple product, which is iOS. That's the operating system. And then there's everybody else, which is Android. So you either have a choice, you can buy an Apple product or any other brand name that supports Android. There's tons of them on the market. So when it comes to a size of a tablet, obviously the larger the tablet you get, the more screen real estate you have. The only problem is it adds more weight. And if you paid an awful lot of money for a large tablet, guess what happens when you go to move your holder? Yep, it just falls to the ground and your expense is wasted. So it's probably not a good idea to get too large a tablet. Um, my preference is usually between the seven and eight inch. But if you already have a large tablet or your eyesight's not that great and you need the real estate, then go with the larger tablet. Just be careful not to drop it. Here's what an iPad mini looks like in the controller. It's a good size, it doesn't fall out and it doesn't weigh very much. And here's what a Nexus 7 from Android looks like. It's a seven inch screen in the controller. And again, it's extremely light. It's even lighter than an iPad mini and it doesn't fall out. When it comes to screen resolution, as long as you get 720p or higher, that will work fine for uh, your drone flying around and being able to see what you need to see. If you're looking at tablets in a store side by side, crank up the brightness on them. You want the tablet that has the brightest display. Here's an iPad mini. The brightness is cranked full. It's playing a video off of YouTube. See the glare? And I don't think you can see what's really going on on the tablet. I move it around. So brightness is a big factor what these things can do. And here's a Nexus 7 tablet. It's playing the same video and uh, I've got the brightness cranked on it. And as you can see in the sun as well, it's, you know, it really takes a toll on the screen. It's difficult to see. All right, so you have your controller here. Uh, one thing about these controllers, there's no uh, GPS chip built into them. So they rely on your tablet or your phone to get the GPS signal just for some of the features that are included in the DJI Go app. Um, so that means if you buy a tablet, it's a good idea to get a tablet that has a GPS chip. If you get an Android tablet, most of them have a GPS chip built into it, like this is a Nexus 7 and it does. If you get an Apple product, uh, just make sure it has the GPS chip in it. Uh, and you'll know for sure if it has the chip, if it has the cell data service built into the tablet, then it's got a GPS chip. If it doesn't have the cell service built into it, good chance there's no GPS chip. Yeah, screen glare, it's not too great. And uh, most uh, pilots of the Inspire or the Phantom will tell you that that's a problem on a bright sunny day, especially if the sun is directly overhead. When it's on an angle, it's not too bad because you can just move out of the way and uh, see what's going on. So the fix for that a lot of times is people buy a product such as this, I'll be close if it focuses here. And anyways, that product there is basically a screen glare shield that you can put on your iPad or Android. This is an Android device uh, and it reduces some of the glare, but it's, it's not perfect. And when you put these on your tablet, it takes away some of the functionality of touching it lightly. You have to touch a little bit harder. I'll show you what I do, which is really inexpensive. So what I take with me is a piece of cardboard that I've cut out of a, uh, a box 
and I just fit it over the top like that. So it sits in the holder, whatnot. And this top part here, it actually works quite well. I can still touch. A lot of times people will buy hoods that are specially made for their tablet. The problem with the hood is when you're trying to stick your finger and stick it in, you got to fit it in this box type thing. With this piece of cardboard, I can just move things out of the way, I can knock it whatever way I want, and uh, it works perfectly. So that's totally inexpensive. I've been using it for an awfully long time, and it works perfect on sunny days. So what exactly is screen lag? Well, that's when you're flying your drone and you move to the right, the left, up, down, and your drone moves extremely fast, reacts to your controls, except your screen doesn't react as fast. Not a big problem unless you're racing your drone in tight quarters and you want to avoid objects. But if you're flying around for photography reasons, whatnot, you probably won't even notice it. So it's not a big deal. Um, you can check forums online. People will talk about lag and whatnot, but really, in my opinion, it comes down to not an issue at all, unless, of course, you're flying fast and you're trying to avoid objects quickly. So this is a question I get asked often. What exactly do I use when I fly? Well, I used to use the iPad mini. I like it, it fits in the case nice. It's not too big, it's light, it works great. Except this iPad mini does not have the GPS chip. So that wasn't a big deal. When I wanted to use the features with GPS, all I did is I just pulled out my phone and I used my phone and everything was great. But then a lot of times I needed my phone for something else and I just wanted an all-in-one tablet. So then I switched to the Nexus 7 tablet, which uh, this is a pretty old one. I think it's a 2013 model. Has a GPS chip, bright screen, very light, stays in the holder nice, and it fits in the case beautifully, so it leaves me room for other items that I wish to put in the case. Uh, it's done really well, has a low latency, good all-around tablet, and it's dirt cheap if you want to find them uh, on uh, eBay or whatnot. Anyways, uh, hope this has been helpful. Hope it's been uh, something that helps you out with your first tablet for your Phantom or your Inspire. And uh, most importantly, get out there and fly.